Doc Talk is brought to you by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc., the makers of Pyramid 5 Plus Presponse SQ, a market leader in combination respiratory vaccines. Hey there, folks. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Thanks a lot for joining us today on Doc Talk. We're going to have a great show. Our guest is Dr. Bob Larson, and he is the Coleman Chair and a professor at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. We're going to talk about flies, cattle, getting rid of those pesty things. I'm glad that you joined us. Stick around, it's gonna be a great show. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Welcome to the show, Bob. It's good to be here. <laughs> Folks, Dr. Bob Larson, and Dr. Larson is the Coleman Chair, and he is a professor in clinical sciences here in the Department of Clinical Sciences at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. And Bob has spent a lot of time not only in raising cattle, in practice with cattle, and, and, and then extension, and now research with cattle. So yeah. got a lot of experience, and, and uh, got a chance to move back home and continue That's right. on your 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 career here at Kansas State. That's exactly right. We've got a good group here and it's fun to work come to work every day. Yep, yep, we sure do and we're, we're very lucky. And so we're going to talk about flies and uh, you know there's lots of different types of flies and different things that they cause but let's just kind of jump right in. That's exactly right. When you think of summertime uh, maybe you think about other more pleasant things but you also think <laughs> about flies. Yeah. Uh, it's the time of year when we deal with flies and there are, there are a number of different types of flies and and the reason that's important is well they, their populations might peak at slightly different times of the summer uh, they cause different types of annoyance or problems for cattle and we control them in different ways so even though we typically think of flies as just one category of nuisance as flies but there's actually several different types of flies that cattle producers are concerned about and and work to to minimize you bet well, let's talk a little bit about some of these different types of flies and, and because I, you know, to me, a fly is a fly. I'm going to get after it, but, um, but there are some that, that leave you with a little more discomfort than others. Too. That, that's right. There's a, there's a few really important fly species that we deal with in cattle. For cattle out grazing on grass, uh, probably the biggest ones are the horn fly and face fly and somewhat also the, the horse fly. Um, and so we're going to target our control methods really on, on those particular fly species. When you move cattle into a dry lot or a feedlot situation, then you're talking about stable flies and house flies as a bigger problem. And, and again, we'll talk a little bit more about this, but, but those flies have some differences. They have differences in the amount of time they spend on the cattle versus off the cattle, and differences in where they tend to lay their eggs and, and different parts of the life cycle that's gonna impact how we try to control them. Well, all of those are going to be important when you start to think about management products and things that you're going to implement because if they don't spend much time on the cattle and, and, and that, you probably don't want to spend a lot of time controlling them there. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So understanding their life cycle and understanding where they like to be is, is important? Yes, it is. And, uh, you know, and it also impacts other aspects of how they damage or how they cause problems for cattle. You know, some of the problems we see with flies are, are just the, the annoyance. Some of them are, are blood suckers, so they're, gonna, they're going to have a painful bite. They're going to suck blood. They're going to decrease growth performance. They're going to change the behavior of cattle. They'll drive the cattle to the shade or bunching up or getting in water to get away from the flies. All of those are problems both with animal welfare, animal health, and productivity. Um, another thing that we think about with flies, too, that 
that uh, comes up is how this affects our neighbors. Uh, our neighbors, Absolutely. other cattlemen, our neighbors that don't raise cattle. Uh, we, one of the reasons we try to control flies is not only for the health and comfort of the cattle, but I don't really want to get phone calls from neighbors that are angry because there's a lot of flies on their property <laughs> that came from my property. Absolutely. And so those are all reasons that we try to attack these dang things all summer long. Uh, we worry about flies and they, they take some effort to control. Cool. We're going to take a break. When we come back from the break, we're going to get into talking about some flies on grazing cattle and how to control and prevent that. You're watching Doc Talk and we're sure glad you joined us. This Meet the Veterinarian is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Dr. Laird Lawrence is the founder and owner of Hill Country Veterinary Clinic, a mixed practice located in Fredericksburg, Texas. Dr. Lawrence is a graduate of Texas A&M University and has served as technical services manager of U.S. cattle and small ruminants for Merck Animal Health since January 2013. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do, every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Hi, I'm Kevin Ochsner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. With BRD, every second counts. And when you get new high-risk cattle, you've got a choice to make. You can either take your chances and wait and see what happens, or you can take charge of BRD. Right from the start, treat bacteria up front with Batril 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable. Now approved by the FDA for BRD metaphylaxis and high-risk cattle. Ask your veterinarian about Batril 100 and make it your go-to drug to control BRD and high-risk cattle or for treatment of BRD. Batril 100, right the first time. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Enrofloxx 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine and swine respiratory disease. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with my friend and guest, Dr. Bob Larson. And Dr. Larson is a world-renowned bovine practitioner and clinician uh, professor here at Kansas State University, and, and we're tickled to death to have you on the show and... and have you sharing some of this with us? I, when we're talking about flies, one of the, the you know, we're going to get into the grazing cattle, but when I was in practice, we had this terrible outbreak of flies next to one of my client's feeding facilities. Yeah. Well, the, the field next to us was a cucumber patch that they were raising cucumbers for thalassic pickles or somebody's pickles. Right. And the cucumbers got too big, and so they wouldn't fit in the jar or something to that nature. So they put them all in a, per, in a pit for a slurry. And then here came the flies. We got flies <laughs> like you couldn't believe. But it's like what we were talking about when you left about the neighbor and, yeah. you know, some of those things. And sorry, it, maybe it wasn't Vlasic. I don't know the brand name of the pickle. Don't, don't, don't write the pickle company. But anyway, <laughs> you know, well, it's that, things we don't think about. That's exactly right. Flies are, you know, they're, they're very adaptable and they, they will find ways to be annoying. Dirty boogers. All right. Yeah. So let's talk about flies on grazing cattle. Yeah, and and uh, some of the things that we have there. Yeah, the the two biggest flies that we really are worried about with grazing cattle are horn flies and face flies, and they're they're actually fairly different 
in that the, the horn fly is a biting fly. It's a blood, it's blood meals. And it mostly lives on the, the back and shoulders of, of cattle and sometimes up on their pole. They're called horn flies, but they don't spend that much time up on, not around, on the horns. Not really on the <laughs> horns. But the back and the sides, they, like I say, they, they have a piercing mouth part. So they're going to take blood meals, and that's annoying to the cattle. They'll, um, we see decreased in you know, weight gain performance, decrease in milk production. Uh, the, the stable fly has also been associated with passing mastitis. In, in beef cattle. And so it, it has a number of problems. It spends almost all of its time on cattle. So most of our control methods are focused on the fact that we can treat the cattle and have an impact on the fly. Now these are the ones that when you you see the the cow, you know, shake or, or yeah, and shiver the, and the cloud yep, comes off exactly. the, the, the cow. And, and you know, it's, it's, boy, I tell you what, and they're just constant tail swishing and, and things to that yeah. nature. Yeah, they're a problem. Now, the face fly is the other fly that we really worry about a lot with grazing cattle. Um, it is, it's different. It's a, it's a bigger fly if you want to look at them closely or side by side than a horn fly. And they spend most of their time around the face of the cattle. They don't have a piercing mouth part. They, they suck on the, on the fluids that come out of the eyes and nose and things like that. One of the biggest problems with face flies is they'll cause enough damage around that eye or in that eye and they move from animal to animal so that they can spread the organisms that cause pink eye in cattle. And that really its biggest effect is, is the fact that it's spreading the disease pink eye. The flies by themselves are not that annoying to the cattle. They don't really spend that much time on the cattle. They spend most of their time off of the cattle in vegetation, decaying vegetation, things like that, and away from the cattle and only come back and occasionally feed. And that, again, that impacts the way we're able to attack these animals or these flies. And, and again, the, the, the real problem is the fact that it's associated with spreading pink eye. Great. We're going to take a break. When we come back from the break, we're going to get into the differences between some of the grazing cattle and the dry lot cattle and some of the things you think about with flies. Thanks, Bob, for being here yeah. today, and thank you for watching More About Flies with Dr. Bob Larson after the break. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. This tip brought to you by Batrol 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable, now approved for use in controlling BRD in high-risk cattle. Batro 100, right the first time, whether it's controlling BRD in high-risk cattle or treating BRD. Hi there and welcome to today's On the Farm Tip, sponsored by my friends over at Bear Animal Health. We're going to talk about proper use of antibiotics in food animals. The first thing we want to make sure is that we have a valid veterinary client-patient relationship so that we make sure we pick the right drug for the syndrome or illness that the animals have. We want to make sure we have the proper route of administration, make sure that we have the proper dosage rates, and make sure that we're doing things that it says to do on the label. We want to make sure that we follow and adhere to label directions for the proper withdrawal time, meaning from the time I treat the animal until the point in time that that animal is clear or ready for slaughter. These are some things that are very important, and that's your on-the-farm tip of the day as sponsored by Bear Animal Health. This hog is head over hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. <laughs> Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun Delivery System, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it from an ATV, on horseback, or just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. ValleyVet.com, ValleyVet.com, ValleyVet Supply. 
Beef producers asked for it, and Norbrook delivers. Introducing new Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine respiratory disease. Enroflox 100 is an FDA-approved, ready-to-use injectable antimicrobial solution to treat BRD associated with Mannheimia hemolytica, Pastorella multocida, and Histophilus somni in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle. Administered SQ as a multiple-day therapy. Consult with your veterinarian today about Enroflox 100, the new choice. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Bob Larson. Dr. Larson is the Coleman Chair and Professor in the Department of Clinical Sciences here at the Veterinary School at Kansas State University. And talking about flies. Mm -hmm. Talked about the face flies and the horn flies out on the grazing cattle. Now we're going to move in dry lots. So we right. bring cattle in dry lots, feedlot situations, stalker operations. What is the difference that we're going to see as far as species? Well, when we move to a dry lot situation, feedlots, uh, we tend to see primarily stable flies and house flies. One of the reasons that's a little bit different or important to think about compared to grazing cattle. Horn flies, there yep. you go. Horn flies and face flies both like to lay their eggs in basically fresh manure pats. Okay. okay. The flies that we see in a dry lot situation, they actually prefer to lay their eggs in decaying vegetation, and particularly if it's mixed with a little bit of manure. So feed, manure, wet, moist feed areas are the places where the, the flies that we see in dry lot situations laying their eggs. Therefore, when we think about control, we really do focus a lot on not just manure, but other, other places where the animals will, or the flies will lay their eggs, primarily spilled feed, spoiled feed. So things like sanitation becomes really important, just keeping things as cleaned up, picked up uh, as possible to try to keep the, the places where those flies can lay eggs down to a minimum. Yeah, and, and you start to think about, you know, we got to feed hay to to calves when we're starting them, but when you get it out in the alleyway and you don't get that clean, your feed alleys yeah. cleaned up, or old bale rings. You old know. bale rings, silage pits, feed piles, um, the, you know, the edges right under the, the bunks where feed kind of accumulates, those are all great areas for the flies to accumulate, and so they're areas that we really target to keep cleaned up and, and minimized to avoid fly problems. You bet. So, so in the dry lot situation, you know, I, I think that we always think of more of the, the issues with, with flies being more outside of dry lots, but, mm -hmm. but it can be a pretty big deal inside. And so the house flies also are known for, for transmitting some diseases potentially, correct? Yeah, there's, there's, you know, just if you think about where flies move, you know, from animal to animal, from manure to animals and those kinds of things, there, there's a number of different diseases that they can move around in a, in a cattle operation that we're just trying to suppress as much as possible. And the other thing is, as we went back to the neighbor deal, you don't want to be out there eating your piece of watermelon this summer. No, I don't. And have the flies keep coming. <laughs> and the other thing is, is that, that we have seen that the flies will um, transmit the, the E. coli 157. Yeah, yeah there's, so. there's a number of things. So we really do want to try to keep those populations down as low as possible. In that feedlot environment, uh, you know, the, the actual middle of the pen where it's packed down pretty good, that's not where the flies are going to lay eggs and, and, and live. Huh. It's going to be along the edges, along the fence rows. It's going to be around the water tanks, particularly if it gets kind of wetty, wet and, and uh, moist there, and just off the yard, you know, as you, as you divert uh, rainwater and, and off flow into lagoon pens and things like that those are areas where the, the flies can develop as well. Yeah. So when you think about a dry lot, you, you think a lot about sanitation, just trying to get rid of any of those places where the flies like to lay eggs. Keep the weeds mowed down, folks. That's, that's right. <laughs> All right, well, when we come back, we're gonna close up our show on flies. We've been uh, having a great time here with Dr. Bob Larson from Kansas State University, and we're gonna have a little more after the break. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. Hi there, and welcome to today's BQA Tip of the Day, and we're going to talk about heat stress. 
first thing you need to do is we need to look at the thermal heat index and as the thermal heat index starts to approach that point of concern of causing heat stress to cattle we need to discontinue what we're doing so we don't want to work cattle during the heat of the day or process cattle or ship cattle during the heat of the day and really pay attention to our humidity temperature and wind speed the next thing you want to make sure is that we provide airflow for cattle during general times in which they're trying to eat or live within the pens. Knock down weeds, build mounds, put up shades, many different things that we can do to provide airflow, to provide shade and relief from heat. That's today's BQA tip of the day. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot, with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We're having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. Hello, I'm Dr. Chris Blevins at Kansas State University Veterinary Health Center, and I'm with you for a horse tip. You gotta remember that a horse's feet are very important, and there's a aspect of everyday uh, routine, uh, just moving around and use uh, on the farm or in performance. When you look at a horse's hoof and the hoof capsule, Cleaning out the hoof is very important because they can get a lot of debris. They can get rocks inside uh, the grooves of their foot. They can even get a nail. So cleaning out the horse's feet are going to be very important and assessing on a day-to-day -day basis. And while you're on rides, taking and having a hoof pick is also going to be important to keeping everything clean and safe. So again, keep your farrier and your veterinarian involved for keeping your hoof healthy and free of debris. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Bob Larson, and we're looking at some new contraption here, the vet yeah. gun to flies. I'd, um, <laughs> I'd have to get to be a better shot to pick off those flies one by one with that, I think. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Guns don't kill flies. I kill flies. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, all kidding aside, we're going to talk about, you know, how to control these flies and prevent the flies yeah. um, in, in the system. And, and let's start out with the dry lot. Yeah, let's do. Now, remember, because the, the flies that we're most concerned about in a dry lot situation, they tend to lay their eggs where there's vegetative matter or vegetative matter mixed with manure. And so it's all about sanitation, cleaning up the feed areas, not letting it get wet around uh, watering, uh, waterers, troughs, those kinds of things. So it's, it's really a lot about sanitation, keeping things cleaned up as much as possible. Because the fly doesn't spend much time on the cattle, uh, we don't typically talk about spraying cattle in a dry lot situation. We might spray the premises, these same stable flies. They'll, they'll, when they're not on the cattle, they'll be on fence rails, they'll be on surfaces around the area. Weeds. Yeah, they're just not on the cattle. Right. So spraying the weeds, spraying the facilities, and those kinds of things, we can do that as a premise spray, as well as um, there's use of parasitic wasps and other things that, that attack the, the little larva in the that feed stage. Through, yeah. Feed through products so, that wind so up there, in the manure. Yeah, th there's, there's several ways we attack them, but in a dry lot situation, it's gonna start with sanitation. Sanitation and trying to kill the, the pupa or the egg, so exactly. exactly. What about grazing cattle? Well, in grazing, it's a little bit different. Uh, in that situation, the, the flies, both the house, the horn fly and the face fly, likes to lay their eggs in the fresh fecal pads. Well, out on a big pasture, we're not going to really impact 
like that very much. We're not going to go pick them up. Yeah. Well, it's hard to spray 80 acres. It, it is. You know? <laughs> and, and so it's really about uh, using our chemical controls for these flies in a, in a way that's timely and most effective uh, to get it to the cattle. We've got several ways we can deliver the, the fly control chemicals to cattle. We can use ear tags. Yep. We can use back rubbers, dust bags, oilers, sprays. All of those are ways to deliver one of several different types of, of chemicals on, onto the cattle to control flies. Guns. Yeah. We got guns. <laughs> That's right. Solution with a trigger. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, we're trying to deliver the chemicals. Now, the one thing about the manure, I said that we couldn't do much about them. There are some feed-through insecticides that basically, you, in a mineral mix or otherwise, the cattle consume uh, a product, an insect growth regulator, that then when it passed in the manure and the fly lays an egg there, it disrupts the ability of that, that egg and pupa larva to develop properly. And those work in, in some situations. The biggest problem with them is the cattle need to consume that consistently and flies are moving between herds. If neighbors aren't using that same product, then, then you don't get the same level of control. So typically we don't talk about controlling the manure in a grazing situation, but there are, there are some tools for that. Well, you've been a great guest today, and oh, as always, some great information for our producers and veterinarians. Good. Well, hopefully everybody can uh, enjoy the summer without a lot of fly problems. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, if you want to know more about what Dr. Larson and I do here at Kansas State University, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Remember, always work with your local practitioner. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Thanks for joining us this morning on Doc Talk, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Doc Talk was brought to you by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc., the makers of Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, a market leader in combination respiratory vaccines.